Hello artists. Today during the drop-in Zoom, I got a couple of questions and so I wanted to go ahead and demo um, the responses. So the first question was from B and it was, how do you, what do you do to your canvas paper? It wrinkles when you start painting on it, it gets wet. And, and so what my suggestion is that you uh, tape it onto another surface. So what I did is I just taped it to the back of my canvas board here, but you can use any cardboard. You can even just tape it to um, the sides and the bottom to the pad itself. So tape around it to keep it from moving. And this is painter's tape, but you can use any kind of tape that you have, uh, whether it's scotch tape or duct tape or packing tape. Everybody usually has some kind of tape at home. And so that's one of the things. Something else that came up was, well, how do I blend? So you, we've seen all these videos that show other artists working. And so I'm going to show you how to use Secret Sauce brush. This is called a fan brush. And many of you, if some of you have ever watched Bob Ross, you'll have seen him use it to create trees and other artists have used it that way. And some have used it to create cloud patterns in the sky. But the primary purpose of the fan brush is blending from one value to another. So today I want to show you how to use the retarder because you don't want to use too much of it. If you add too much retarder to your paint, it'll stay sticky and it never quite dries. Um, remember, we always start with invisible glove. I am wearing these gloves because I hurt my wrist. Uh, getting the classes online and so now I have to wear splints and I don't want to get my splints full of paint because gross I have to wear them past my painting time you know so I'm wearing gloves instead but before you paint today or any day please remember to put on your invisible glove and wear and then as you know I didn't get a painting palette like you did in my kit they forgot and so I'm just going to keep reusing my paper plate over and over. So I have white and I have black. And you remember from my demos, I wet my canvas and grated it down. And I wanted to share with you a secret. Um, so since my painting has been dry for some time, one of the things I can do to make it receptive to my new painting is to just wet my brush and I'm working in acrylic, so I'm just wetting a brush and just lightly covering the whole surface. And now when I come in and I paint, the surface of my canvas is a little uh, wet and more receptive to my applying new layers of paint. All right, I have white and I have black and I'm gonna grab some of my retarder and I'm gonna put, you can see I haven't even opened it. So you might have to poke it. I peeled off the little cardboard, but it looks like there was a little plastic film on there. So I don't wanna to add too much of it. So for the whole painting session today, I only have this tiny little bloop here. I'm gonna grab it and put it up here so you can see it better. That's all the, all the amount I have. It's like about like a dime, the amount of a dime. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little drop of water on top of my blue of white and a little bit on top of my blue of black. And I have just a tiny bit of that slow dry medium into my white and into my black. And if I create a medium gray here, I can move from my medium gray towards a darker gray and then a darker gray still and then the other way 
I'm just going to use so that you can see me blending and using that fan brush. Um, I'm just going to use a sphere and I'm drawing it in a color pencil because that's what I have on hand. But you, you will be doing whatever still life you're doing using a, either a color pencil or a um, or one of our crayons. And I'm going to have my light source coming from the top. And so I'm going to have a highlight here. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do, we saw this a lot, and of course I, I wet my brush first. We saw this a lot in our uh, all the different demos is black, block in my darks. And so I'm just going to come in. I'm going to come in with my core shadow. This is a white sphere. And then I'm going to come in with a light gray. And while it's still wet, it starts to blend a little bit, but not significantly with my brush. And I can come in with my fan brush and I am just going to tickle that surface. And I can move my fan brush in the direction I want to blend my color. Do you see how this is my secret sauce? I mean, that is just, boom, it's done. Now I can come in with my pure white highlight. Here. I wet my, to clean my, I have to clean my brush and now I can blend that out. Remember that in my core shadow I'm going to have some areas that are a little darker. Now I can come in and I want a sharper edge here. And I need to get my fan brush a little drier than it is right now. So I just dry it with my rag a little bit and come in and blend that out. Anytime I wet it to remove excess paint, I'm going to dry it really well. And then again, my neighbor is mowing the lawn again. He is so bored during the quarantine, he mows the lawn every day. Can't say I blame him. He obviously doesn't paint or draw or print to keep him occupied. So now I've got a pretty defined sphere. Say I want a little bit more light on this edge. That background, remember the side area, the light, the lightest side of my still life, whatever I'm painting or my portrait or landscape, whatever it is I'm painting, I'm doing a grisaille study. I want to contrast the behind the light side with a darker value and behind the dark side with a lighter value. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that doesn't mean that this has to be like a dark gray here. If I want it to look soft and atmospheric, it just has to be slightly darker. So I don't want you to leave a halo. Go right up to your form. If you say you went over it, that's okay. Use your fingers to remove the excess paint. You not, may not know this, but when they look at Leonardo da Vinci's paintings up close, they've discovered tons of fingerprints. He just used his finger. He was basically finger painting. So no, no problems with you dabbing it with your fingers. And again, I'm wetting it to help my paint go on smoother. And spread easier 
And now, it doesn't have to be flat. In fact, I don't want it to be completely flat. I'm going to go ahead and have it go from darker to lighter back here. Of course, it would not look good with such a smooth sphere, so I'm going to use my fan brush to blend that nice and soft. Go right up to your sphere. You don't want to see a halo. A halo just, you know what that little halo tells the world? I'm afraid losing what I already painted. Now I'm going to do the other side and this side my paint dried already so this side I'm going to go ahead and wet a little bit and I'm going to come in with a gray but my gray is going to be lighter. This is the dark side of the sphere. This is my lighter side of the table and I want to show that light is falling here. I'm just wetting this whole area it dried on me. So I'm wetting it and I'm going to come in with my paint, put a nice thin film. Notice I haven't really been adding extra slow dry medium, don't really need to. And in painting my sphere here, I lost my contour. I'm going to come in with my round and put that back in. And I watered that edge so that my wet into dry paint wouldn't be like a hard blob but a soft gradation and there we go that's that and now I want to start doing my cast shadow so a cast shadow remember is hardest right underneath so I'm going to come in with pure black well, pure black is very wet. <laughs> pure black right under my form. Right under it. And it's casting a shadow. And now it's gonna blend into my darker grays. There's an umbra, an up an umbra. So there's a cast shadow, but the cast shadow has several different layers to it. It's not just one dark ellipsis on the ground. And so I'm just applying my paint really fast, pretty heavy and wet. And now I can come in right not right underneath my form but right on these edges and i'm going to soften my cast shadow around this edge now in real life if you've set up your own still life instead of working from one of the pictures that i've i've given you a page with some photo simple black and white photos that you can then come in and do your own shading with Now this looks like a mess now, but it won't in a minute. I'm just showing you how to use that fan brush to blend values. You notice I, at this point I've used every single brush that comes in my in my kit and in your kit. Now remember that there's always reflected light coming off of this. So I'm coming back in with a little light and I'm going to go right over that hard edge a little bit between my light and my dark. If I soften my edges, 
it actually helps my forms look more 3D. Now watch. You can now come in. While that background is still a little wet, and give myself a nice cast shadow there on this side. I'm going to come in and blend that out. One way I can blend it out is just wet my brush and let the remainder of that paint, it gets watered down and blend in with whatever I had underneath. See how it becomes more translucent there? And then I'm going to do the same thing along this edge here. Now, if I don't want my table to be really sharply delineated, but just implied, like I just did right here, I can just blend that color that I just applied right up into that lighter value and have it blend. I can use my fan brush or I can use my regular brush in the other way as well. Wet my brush wet my paint and I can come down and have that edge just soft, soften and blend out. Now, the very last thing I'm going to do with this painting, with this demonstration, is I'm going to add my pure, pure white highlights because I have been blending so much, I've lost pure, pure white, and I'm going to come in and smooth that white out here, give myself a really big, and I think I'm gonna give myself quite a bit of a, just a little reflected light right here. Just a tiny little like line of white here. I think that will make this sphere look a little crisper don't need to in terms of the elements or categories of light it's not necessary but I think it'll make this look just a little crisper and I feel like I need a little bit more reflected light around around this bottom edge here so I'm gonna come in with some lighter gray right through here I wet the paint, I wet the brush, so I have a very thin layer of paint, it's not a thick layer of paint, and I can come in with that fan brush and see I can just blend that in nice and easy, and I think I'm going to bring it up a little bit more like through here, 
See, I applied the paint a little thicker. I come in with a little wet. And then while my brush right through here just a little bit and use my fan brush to lighten this area just a little bit there yeah all right artists so what we learned today we learned a, a couple of tricks we learned that we can wet an area that has become dry and just wear it not dripping wet, just wet it ever so lightly to help paint spread easier. We've learned that you can blend one value into another so easily with a fan brush. We learned that you can soften your edges to have like parts of your forms kind of disappear into the background in some places, not in all. And that makes it look more three-dimensional because it gives it a, a greater feel of um, three-dimensionality and of atmosphere. We learned that a cast shadow right underneath our form should be pure black and then that shape that cast shadow needs to grow and become lighter and more diffused so it's only sharp see i'm coming back in and making it nice and sharp right underneath that sphere and then have For some reason, artists, my video camera keeps turning off. So what I wanted to say is give yourself time and the luxury of coming back to your painting over and over again until you get it exactly how you want it. We live in a world that demands that we respond instantly. We tweet, we text, we WhatsApp, we respond to each other. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Every second of every minute, we're supposed to be producing. We're supposed to be doing something. We're supposed to be working. The fact that in a world that is all about things happening instantly, that we are spending time creating a painting, mixing colors, looking at forms, Painting those forms, taking that kind of time is not only a rare privilege, it's also a very radical, almost anarchic act. It gives you space to breathe, reflect, express, create. What could be more luxurious? What could be more radical than that?